Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Dan with Theta Trend. Today is Tuesday, February 18th, 2014. It's about 5 a.m. here, Mountain Time. In this video today, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about selecting a credit spread to sell. And the reason I'm doing this video is I received an email recently from, from a reader, and, and he was wondering, you know, specifically what delta should he be selling and how many days to expiration. Um, he was planning to trade the Theta Breakout system, which is uh, selling credit spreads on a new Dolce & Channel breakout and then covering them on the violation of the average true range trailing stop. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the selection of which spread you might sell and why and just just take a look at that and talk about expectancy as well. Um, so what we're looking at here now, this is to try to the Russell 2000, the IWM. And recently, this was January, we had that sell-off in January that everybody's probably aware of. We made a new 50-day low here back on February 3rd, it looks like. And from that point, we've rallied back up. But the, the system is still short. So we have an average true range trailing stop up here at 116.31 or so. And we would be looking to sell a call spread. To, to get short the market here. And this would be our stop level, 116.31. And price closed last week at uh, oh, 114.06, right there. So let's just take a look at a couple of options if we were gonna sell a credit spread. What I've done here is I've taken a look at two different spreads. Um, one is in the month of April and one is expiring in May. So April has about 60 days to expiration. May has 87 days to expiration. Um, I usually like to go anywhere from, say, 45 to 75 days. I, I would go up to 87 days. I'm, I'm certainly not saying I wouldn't. Um, so we'll take a look at these two because these are the closest to meeting that criteria. And, you know, so the days to expiration is not a hard and fast rule. It's sort of what, what gives you the best outcome. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this April spread. I'm just going to select the box. And what we're doing is we're selling the 119 and buying the 123. So with price here at 114.06, um, we were going to be receiving a credit of, say, $66 or so. And we talked about that 116.31 level. That is our stop level. And what we're worried about is what happens, 116.30 is close enough, uh, what happens if price is to trade there today? So if price was to trade to that 116.30 level today, we would be looking at a loss of about $40 or so before commissions. So what I've done is I've put together an expectancy calculator in Excel. And what we have here is this is a column for the credit. This is the winning percentage. So basically the system wins 50% of the time, say. Uh, the potential loss, this is what happens when it hits our stock level, our loss percentage or I guess our losing trade percentage, I should say, and then the commissions. And so six cents, that assumes a round trip commission on one vertical at $1.50 a contract, which is you know, a pretty approachable commission structure. So let's go ahead and put in some things here. So 0.66 is our potential credit, and our potential loss is, we said negative 40 cents. Uh, and so that gives us an expected outcome of seven cents. If we were to do, take this trade time and time and time again, you know, thousands and hundreds of thousands of times, we would expect to make seven cents on this trade. Um, so that's a trade that you would want to take because it has a positive expected outcome. And that's just ignoring any sort of additional analysis or anything like that. This is just statistically looking at it and saying, yeah, that's a good bet. Um, so let's go back here and take a look at the... May trade. So the May trade, I'm looking at selling the 120, buying the 124, and that comes with a credit of about 78 cents. And the loss at that 116.30 level is basically $34, 33.71, so we'll call it 34. Um, and again, what we want to do is go back to the calculator and put that in. And I've created another row here for it. And now I've already forgotten, was it 78 cents? I think it was, yeah, 78 cents. 
and this was negative 34. So that gives us an expected outcome of 16 cents per vertical. Um, and what we can do here is we can say, well, if my winning percentage is a little bit higher, I can tweak this number to see what my expected outcome would be. You know, say my winning percentage is, is 55%. Um, all of a sudden, the expected outcome per trade goes up. I've created the spreadsheet so that the loss percentage is a function of the win percentage. Um, but let's just take it back to 50%. So if we're looking at this, the, the longer dated trade has this higher expected outcome. Um, and part of that is because, one, it has a higher credit, and two, it has a lower potential loss. Um, so the combination of those two things, given the same win-loss percentage, leaves it with a higher expected outcome. So what is different is the days to expiration. So in the first case, we have 60 days to expiration. I think that's what we said, well, 59 uh, versus 87 days to expiration. So if we were to go over here and bump out price, let's say we bump out price to, I don't know, March 11th or something. If we go to March 11th at 116.30, we're looking at a potential loss of $20 on the May spread. And a loss of... $17 or $18, let's just call it $18 on the April spread. So they're still pretty close. Um, but that's the sort of thing you like to look at as well is as time goes on, the, the amount of the spread that comes into the money is going to happen faster for the April spread than for the May spread. So there's really not a right answer to the question. Um, it's a personal preference thing and it's, it's whatever you feel the most comfortable with. But if it was me, I would probably be selling this spread uh, just because there's a higher expected outcome and I don't mind selling longer dated options. That's not a recommendation to take a trade or anything like that, but I'm just telling you what my personal preference is. Um, the other question is what delta to sell. And in this case, I think both of these short option deltas are somewhere in the neighborhood of 20. And let's take a look here. So in April, we were looking at the 119, so that's actually 24 delta. And in May, that option is, let's see, what are we on? We're on the 120, so that's also 25 delta. So it's working out to about a 25 delta. Um, and, and what that really is, though, is a function of how far price is from the average true range trailing stop. So if price was a lot closer to the average true range trailing stop, a uh, 25 delta option would be even further out of the money, and we could theoretically sell a little bit higher delta and get a more attractive credit. So at any rate, I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Shoot me an email to dan at thetatrend.com. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here, and I appreciate the support.